PFAS compounds are compounds that are found in lots of consumer products. Um, the biggest sources of them are firefighting foams, the suppression foams you would see at a gas station, water repellent Scotsguard, um, stain proofing for furniture and carpets, uh, dental floss and reflective safety clothing. Um, you can also find it um, waterproof makeup. So anything where something would need a non-stick coating or to be waterproof or stain proof, PFAS compounds are likely to be there. The notice to residents for PFAS levels in the water was sent to Attleboro residents in mid to late July. Um, the reason for this is the EPA looked at two of these compounds, done extensive research, and they have set a lifetime health advisory for a combination of just these two compounds at 70 parts per trillion. With EPA, there's that health advisory, but there is no regulation. Massachusetts took it a step further. Um, they dropped that 70 part per trillion limit down to 20 parts per trillion. And instead of looking at two compounds, we look at six. So it's much stricter than EPA is even looking at regulating. And it's actually the strictest, as of right now, it's the strictest PFAS regulation in the entire country. I am the superintendent of the water department. Um, it's a large system. Uh, we serve a population of just under 44,000 people, um, mostly in Attleboro. We have two treatment plants that feed the distribution system. Um, we're standing here right now at West Street. Um, West, the West Street plant has met the 20 parts per trillion limit um, at just under nine. It was between eight and nine parts per trillion. Um, our other plant is the Wading River treatment plant, and that's located in Mansfield and the levels there were just over 24 parts per trillion for the average for that first quarter of sampling. Um, because of that, we have to notify the residents that there is a health risk there. Um, health effects that are either determined or possible and still under research um, tend to be related to um, thyroids, uh, thyroid issues, cancers, um, liver and kidney function, among others. And the health risk is based on the lifetime average, um, you know, living your whole life, drinking water at or above 20 parts per trillion and, you know, actually drinking two liters of water a day of that. Um, when drinking water regulations are proposed and actually finally mandated, um, the populations we look at are those that we consider vulnerable. Um, this would be people with cancer, um, specifically autoimmune diseases, um, when you get into HIV, lupus, um, that sort of thing. Um, and the other population that we tend to look at the most is pregnant and nursing moms and infants. Uh, so these particular groups are advised right now um, to find an alternative source of drinking water. They can either purchase bottled water on their own. Um, a lot of home filters can remove PFAS. Um, and residents are advised to actually look at the filter manufacturer website for information on if their filter will remove PFAS. Um, those that are a better bet at removing it um, are those that use either reverse osmosis or activated carbon. Um, the other source um, that residents have available to them from drink, for drinking water is right here at West Street. Uh, we do have a filling station right inside when you enter the lot. And you can fill as much as you want and it's free of charge. Um, the city actually doesn't have the ability to provide containers, so residents would have to bring their own, but the water is available and it, the water here currently meets the new regulations. The rest of us really don't have to do much because again, the limit is based on a lifetime average of consuming the water. Um, but if you are nervous, we are providing the alternate water here for anybody that wants it, whether or not you're a vulnerable individual or not. It is not recommended at this time to boil your water. Um, PFAS compounds, um, they are considered the forever chemicals and it's because they don't go away. Um, they don't react with other compounds. They don't, um, they're not volatile, which means they won't disperse into the air and um, into the atmosphere. So if you boil water in an attempt to get rid of PFAS, 
basically the water itself is going to boil off and the PFAS is going to stay, so you would end up concentrating it. Um, Attleboro has two treatment plants again. Um, both plants were either constructed or upgraded in the mid-1990s. Um, and this is back when PFAS wasn't regulated. Remember, it's a, new, um, it's a new regulation. So neither plant was designed to handle removal of PFAS. Um, here at West Street, we remain in regulation. Um, and if the water did spike, we do have activated carbon filters here, which would remove some of the PFAS and help keep the levels lower here. Um, the plant in Mansfield, the Wading River plant, um, really has no sort of treatment for PFAS removal. Um, so we're looking at a long-term solution of activated carbon filters like we have here. Um, and in the meantime, you know, a plant upgrade of that size can take a couple years. Um, so in the meantime, we're looking at bringing on ionic resin treatment to handle it just for the interim to get the levels down while we're waiting for the permanent solution. How long it takes to resolve this issue um, depends on availability of treatment equipment. Um, this regulation began in January of 2021 with the larger systems in Massachusetts. Um, and we've gotten through the very large and the larger systems, which includes Attleboro. Um, there are over 60 other communities in the Commonwealth that are also having compliance issues with PFAS and we're all vying for equipment that isn't so ready, readily available yet. Um, but we're hoping for at least a temporary treatment plant up at the Wading River plant uh, by late fall. If you go to cityofattleboro.us, there is a tab on the site labeled PFAS information. Um, it does have a map of affected areas. Um, and it also has any time we have any update for plant upgrades as they start coming or any new sample results, those will also be on there. Um, and it also takes the notice um, that residents already got and it puts it into easier to understand language. Um, so we do encourage people to take a look at the website.